All right, we are 15 minutes in and, oh, it doesn't, doesn't look that compelling, I'll be honest. It's the holidays, and there is nothing that that makes me want to do more than machine learning. Today I'm going to build a machine learning model that will analyze recipes and then dream up an entirely new recipe that I'll bake and eat right before you here today. And to make the project a little bit sweeter, I'll add just a sprinkle of model explainability so that we understand why our model is making the predictions that it is. I'll be joined by Sarah Robinson. Sarah is an AI expert and baking extraordinaire who works with me at Google. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Dale. Thanks for having me. I heard that a couple of months ago, you used a machine learning model to come up with a new recipe that you baked. Can you tell me about that? So I've been baking a ton over the past few months. And after following a lot of recipes, I started to notice that a lot of baking recipes follow a pattern. So I started to wonder, since machine learning is all about finding patterns in data, could I build a machine learning model to predict what I'm baking given a list of ingredient amounts? So I built a model to predict whether a recipe was a bread, a cake, or a cookie. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing here today. We'll build a model that takes a list of ingredients and then predicts bread, cake, or cookie. And then we're gonna use that core model to come up with new recipes that we'll bake, right? Awesome, let's get started. So step one is to collect a data set of cookies, cake, and bread recipes. We gathered about 700 recipes. Next, we had to do a bit of data pre-processing. For example, there's a lot of consensus that banana bread and pumpkin bread are actually cakes. Even Paul Hollywood agrees. So we had to move the banana and pumpkin breads from the bread category into the cake category. Next, we slimmed down the recipes to just their core ingredients, like flour, eggs, butter, sugar, and a couple more. We also converted all of our ingredient amounts from cups and sticks and teaspoons and tablespoons into one single measurement unit. We used ounces. Okay, so here are all of my recipes. They're converted into ounces and cleaned up and labeled in a Google Sheet. To build my model, I'm gonna use a tool in Google Cloud called AutoML Tables, which is a no-code tool for building machine learning models to analyze tabular data, like spreadsheets or databases. Okay, I'm opening up tables and I'll import my data from that CSV I just showed you. I have to select the bucket where I want the data to be stored and it'll take a second to import. When it's done, I can click on my new data set. And as you can see, a couple of stats about the data are automatically generated, like whether certain columns are missing values and also this useful field correlation with target, which says in isolation, how good is each of these columns at predicting whether or not something is cake, bread, or cookie. I've also selected a target field, which is what we're trying to predict, which is in this case type that I've already selected. To train a model, I'll click the train model button, name my model, say how long I want it to train for, specify which columns I want to include. I don't want to use the name of the recipe or URLs or IDs or anything like that. And then I click train model and wait. This part could take a couple of hours. When my model is done training, I can see how well it did in the evaluate model tab. Here I can see lots of stats on model accuracy, and if I scroll down to the confusion matrix, I can also see how often my model correctly predicted recipes. So it was most accurate for bread, which it labeled correctly 93% of the time, and a little less accurate for cookies, which it confused for cake 21% of the time. When I'm ready to use my model, I can hop into the test and use tab, and here I can make predictions right from within the UI. So I can fill in the values for a cake recipe, click predict, and boom, the model thinks this is cake, which is correct. So Sarah was able to build a model that takes a recipe and then predicts cookie, cake, or bread. But the inquisitive baker might want to know, what is it that makes a cookie a cookie? What gives it that chewy, crunchy property, that cookiness, if you will? And what makes bread fluffy and cake spongy? In other words, we want a model that not just makes a prediction, but also explains what ingredients it was looking at when it made that prediction. And that's called model explainability. Right, we want to understand how important each ingredient is to the model when it's deciding whether something is a bread, a cookie, or a cake. I can take a look at feature importance, which tells me how important different ingredients are to the overall model's predictions. So in this case, butter, sugar, and yeast were really good at helping differentiate the baked goods. Now, even though butter might be important to the overall model, it might be that different ingredients matter more depending on the recipe. So if I go into the test and use tab, I'm gonna put in a cake recipe, and then I'll hit this generate feature importance box, hit predict, and then I'll be able to see how ingredients matter for a specific recipe. Here, egg and fat got the highest feature importance scores, so we can assume that they're the most important thing the model was looking at when it decided that this was a cake. Okay, so now I'm gonna try something really radical. I'm gonna bake not a cookie or a cake, but something that our model deems to be a split between the two, a cakey, if you will. 
and I'm gonna bake something that's a half bread, half cookie. I'm gonna call it a breaky. To find a breaky recipe, I adjusted the ingredients in the model UI until our model predicted that our recipe was about equal parts cookie and bread. Same for Dale's cakey. All right, Sarah, you ready to bake? Yes, let's do it. On your marks, get set, bake. None of my training prepared me for this. Um. All right, here's the cakey. Good luck, little cake. Cookie, cakey. Here is what we've got. Okay, I guess I'll try to pry it from the pan. It does taste like a cookie, but it is like a little bit more airy. I can't tell if it's cooked all the way. <laughs> Did not work um, exactly the way I had hoped it might work. This is actually pretty good. Okay, it's kind of nasty. So yeah, I guess it's a success. I wonder if I put, I put the right amount of flour or double the amount of flour. So I think I kind of flubbed that recipe, something with the flour, but Sarah then went back and baked it herself and her cakey came out just fine. So I guess we'll have to attribute that to human error. If you want to know the details of this project and steal our recipes, make sure you check out the blog post linked below. Happy holidays and see you next year.